motley selection of USB power banks. These are the units that uh, either come with a battery pre-fitted or you put your own in and they've got the micro USB charging port and the full size USB connector for plugging in things like phones or lights or whatever you want. And inside these, this type has a clip together housing that once you've uh, put the battery in, it, it comes without a battery. Once you put the battery in, uh, it's quite hard to get it out without being quite forceful. There we go, plastic cover off, little spacer. Um, and a, this is a, the one I featured in an earlier video which was showing how to cut the batteries down to size because this type doesn't take the full size protected battery so you have to use either an unprotected battery or uh, remove the little circuit board from the back. <coughs> By getting into the circuitry in this one, if I fish it all out, it's got a single chip solution in the back. It's a little 8-pin chip. Um, uh, it's got the inductor for stepping the voltage up, the rectification diode, and very little else, just a few support components and that's about it. Um, and I tested the quiescent current in this and its standby current was staggeringly low. Although it's got 5 volts in output all the time, its output current, its standby current from the battery was only 17 microamps and that's pretty good. This was echoed in this version here, which I shall just stab myself in the process of uh, trying to get the cover back off it. This is a commercial unit I bought with a pre-fitted battery and it again, if I if I remember correctly, I have to open it and find out, oh these are so hard to open because they're not really designed to be open. There we go. So this one comes with the battery pre-fitted inside it and there's a little plastic clip. These are quite hard to open. Yes, indeed, very hard to open because of that little annoying plastic clip. There you go, I'm fluffing this under. I would take the battery out, but of course it's soldered in in this particular one, which makes it just that little bit harder. So, am I going to get this out? I've had it out before. I will get it out again. No, I'm not doing very well here, am I? I'm going to have to use the force. And the force is not particularly fun when you're dealing with lithium batteries because sometimes they just don't like the force and they get violent. Oh, it's almost there. No, it's not almost there. I might give up in this one. I've managed to remove... I'm getting a bit scared now, actually. I've managed to remove an insulator. Oh, this could all go wrong, but having said that, it's all going to make good, makes a good video. Oh, God, every time I pry it up at the other end, it pops out again. Yeah, these were designed to be put together once, clipped in and not taken apart again. Right, first thing I want to do now, I'm almost out with this, is get that insulator back again because that is just a wee bit scary. Oh, there we go. Right, uh, this one, oh, this one is actually based in discrete circuitry. It's got the little voltage monitoring chips and the step up chip. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, right, okay, let's see what its standby current is by breaking into the circuit here. I've got a soldier in handy. So I shall take this connection off. There we go. That looks good. Cellar tape. Classy. And let's get a cheap crab bin meter. These meters are quite handy actually. We'll stick it to the 2000 microamp setting. And I shall stick the meter in line here. So um, that's. Let's try that. 
try not to short everything out in the process. Twenty microamps. Yep, that's a. Uh, yeah, twenty microamps. That's buttons. That's nothing really, for the standby current. Given that the five volts is on all the time. Yes, interesting. Uh, the last one is this one, which uh, takes. I'll move that out of the way. Which takes your choice of battery, and I have to say, a bit disappointing. Uh, this one went off the scale in standby on the 2000 microamp range because it was actually drawing 0.2 milliamps. Um, what's, hold on, 2000 microamps. Hold on, let's check this out. I just thought something. So I shall stick this battery in like that. Positive to zero. Yeah, point two milliamps. And yet in the microamp range, it just goes off the scale at two thousand microamps. Hmm, I'm not really sure about that, but either way. It's just chalk and cheese. It's it's massively, it's massively got got a higher current draw than either of these units. So suddenly this one, which I thought was quite nice before, I'm thinking, you know, leaving it in storage for a while, the battery could actually get drained not super fast at 0.2 milliamps, but but still a lot faster than these ones that are drawing just um, uh, 20 microamps or less. No. Another thing, while I was uh, looking for the chip online, uh, I've got another thing I can show you here, actually. This is a schematic of the chip that's used in these things, this little chip here. And if you look at the schematic, it's got the voltage coming in in the micro USB port, capacitor across it to smooth it, uh, the chip, two LEDs, one to show when it's charging, one to show when it's discharging, a programming resistor, I'm not sure what that's for, um, and then the inductor circuit, which, um, if that's the battery there, um, the it's got again it's got a capacitor across it and the output's got a capacitor across it, but the switching transistor is actually in here, and it uh, pulls the inductor down, and then the uh, tran the spike that's produced by that the uh, boost spike then goes through this diode and charges up the capacitor and goes to the output. So this must be the voltage sensing pin. And the battery, let's see what's there, that's connected to negative. So this must, the current limiting must be between the VCC and the battery output for charging it. Uh, it's an interesting little chip. There seem to be a few different types and it's very hard finding data on them because um, I suppose they're not really a mass market chip for the, the public. They're more designed for Chinese manufacturers. And the one data sheet I did find was in Chinese, which wasn't actually terribly helpful at all. But um, it's the sort of thing that you'd find built into these things. But it's again, it's not something you'd really um, use yourself. Uh, it's maybe a wee bit too specialized. Now, while I've got these uh, out here, I've been writing numbers on them because I measured the voltage that these charge up to before they turn the charger turns off. And the case of this one, it charged up to 4.27. Um, and with this little one in the yellow case, which I think I came got from Banggood, it charged up to 4.21, which is very accurate because the upper charging limit you really want for a lithium is about 4.2 volts. 4.27 was maybe just a tad on the generous side because it really is quite critical at the top of the charge. But um, on the other hand, the discharge uh, voltage, this one stopped, the little yellow one, stopped at about 3 volts, which is a wee bit shy of the lower discharge threshold of 2.7 volts. With uh, lithium, you have to stop charging them before they're too discharged because you can damage them if you over-discharge them. Um, but this one, on the other hand, went down to about 2.1 volts, which is actually seems a bit low. 
And then once it had cut off, I, I had an LED load in it, and a, a voltmeter across it measuring the voltage. Once it had cut off at that level, it then floated quite back up quite quickly back to about 2.8. So I'm not 100% sure if that was just a tiny wee bit over discharging or not. Um, but I'd read reports on flashlight forums while I was looking for what these chips were and data sheets on them. I'd read reports that some people had said that they measured the voltage and when the, bat when the unit had been used to the point it had run down and shut off, they measured the voltage across the battery and it was at zero volts. And you're thinking, I'm not 100% sure if I believe that. Um, and that's why I tested them. <coughs> but I'm wondering if they were using protected batteries, because what happens with the protected battery is that if you over discharge to the 2.7 volt threshold, then the internal circuitry in this battery will cut off, it will disconnect the battery, and you'll measure a very low voltage, probably in the range of anything from zero up to maybe just one volt. And it'll make it look as though the battery is over discharged, but in reality, um, the internal voltage is about 2.7. And as soon as you started charging it up again, the voltage would suddenly shoot up as it reactivated the battery again. But, um, I have to say my favorite of all these so far is the little yellow one from Banggood. And um, it's, it's just a neat wee design. And the quiescent current and standby is minuscule. Um, that was actually mirrored by this scary one that I've got in another video, uh, which is the one that's everything's jammed so tightly that as I was putting it back together again, the, the wire popped off again. And this one also draws about 20 microamps standby current, so it must use a similar chip. But um, yeah, they're, they're quite neat. Uh, I do like these little uh, USB uh, power banks. They're, they're neat little circuits. Um, and the level of integration is, is very, very impressive.